Yo guys, your boy Hookers here and welcome back to another video. So, today's video is going to be a little bit different from the usual things I talk about or the usual gameplays I do. I was, um, I was just, you know, browsing online and I was looking up the news as probably most of you do. And I came across this article on Sky News, which is like the main news channel it seems for the UK and, you know, Europe and things like that. And it also covers the US and all of that. I'm sure a lot of you know what, what it is. And I came across this article a few days ago, and it's titled, Jean-Claude Juncker, YouTube Should Pay More to Musicians. Now, I didn't really think too much of this at the start. You know, when I, when I, when I saw the headline, it didn't really shout out at me. But because it's to do with YouTube, and I haven't heard anyone talk about this, and I tweeted this at Philip DeFranco, and he didn't, you know, obviously hasn't covered it yet. Um, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to cover this because I think this is big news and I think it's kind of gone a bit under the radar here on YouTube. And reading through it, reading what it actually is talking about, you know, this could have some serious implications about, you know, what goes on here on YouTube to do with music. So, I am going to, first of all, I'm going to link it in the uh, description here if you guys want to go and read it. But, you know, it's... It's a bit, um, it's a bit unclear what they're talking about. I mean, you know, it kind of fits because YouTube are very, you know, vague when it comes to discussing, you know, rules and stuff. So it kind of, it kind of, you know, is appropriate that this article is kind of the same way. So anything I talk about, guys, you know, is just my opinion and just some issues I'm going to raise with this. So if you guys have any more knowledge to do with this subject, I would love to engage with you in the comments or you can, uh, Talk to me on Twitter about this. So, it says in this article that YouTube and other video websites, which it then goes on to say Facebook, YouTube and other video websites will be forced to pay more for music under the plans to reform European copyright laws. So, this this whole thing deals with, like, copyright. So, you know, a, a few of you may know, and a few of you might not may know, is a big YouTuber. Um, I'm fairly sure she's a... Uh, a makeup um, YouTuber, you can correct me if I'm wrong, like a beauty YouTuber, uh, Michelle Fawn. She was sued by, oh, I can't remember who it was, but um, she was sued by like a, a big, you know, business, a big uh, music corporation. And I'm fairly sure if I remember right now, don't quote me on this, that she was sued for using their music in the background of her videos. And they, they deemed that as copyright, and it went to court, and they won. She lost. Um, I have no idea how much she, she got sued for, if it was settled. I think it might have been settled out of court. So, But it still went to court, and they won. So that was like a big thing in the, the kind of copyright lawsuit. Because YouTube makes these rules, right? And you feel like if you follow these rules that you're in the law, like the law of the land, like where you are, whether that's the US or, you know, in Europe somewhere or in Asia somewhere or wherever. But the fact is that you can still get sued. I mean, you know, look at H3H3 and, uh, and, um, uh, is a bald guy, that, that lawsuit that's going on. I mean, you know, everyone's saying that H3H3 was, you know, in their right to use that. It was fair use, but... The, the fact is, and, and I really am interested in this kind of subject, is that when it goes to court, that even though it might be fair use on YouTube, it might not be fair use or considered fair use by a jury. Um, and you could, you know, you could get sued for millions um, if that's the case. And you could, you know, ruin your career or ruin your life for a while because you'll be in financial debt. But the fact is, guys, that YouTube rules aren't, you know, ironclad you know what i mean they're not they're not gonna hold up in court all the time you can still get sued and i think what's going back to the article this is kind of making that more you know more like clear that you know even though you're following the youtube rules on copyright we can still sue you um because you're breaking the law you're you're violating these um musicians you know, rights to, to sell their music exclusively. Um, you know, these big, uh, you know, these, these music labels pay millions to their artists even before 
their music is ever released just to release the record with their label so their label can make money. And if somebody is just, you know, copywriting that and using it in their videos or using it, you know, somewhere else and posting it online, just as, you know, a YouTuber who posts, you know, their video on, on YouTube and somebody just takes it and puts it up on Facebook, it takes away the value of that, you know, of that thing, you know what I mean? Because, you know, if you can watch the video on Facebook, and I know I'm going off a bit, a bit off topic here, but if you watch that video on Facebook, I think, um... Boogie2988, a great YouTuber, um, he talked about this a little bit where some of his videos were, you know, unfairly, un, you know, without contacting him, were uploaded to YouTube. And why would you then go and watch that same video on YouTube if you just watched the entirety of fa on Facebook? You know, if you could watch, um, you know, every, you know, football game on YouTube for free, say it was live streaming, why would you then buy, you know, uh, a subscription to like you know the NFL you know game pass where you have to pay like you know three hundred dollars to watch it a year it would it would be pointless to do that so they're kind of protecting themselves with this rule so it basically then goes on to say that the European Commission proposal would see artists and record and record companies get more money from video sites while platforms like YouTube and Facebook would also be required to use technology that can track copyright violations. So, this is a big thing, guys, because I, I I uploaded my first ever YouTube video years ago on another channel, and I had like a hundred views on the video, and it was mostly my friends. But I had no idea. I was like, you know, really young at the time, and it was a gameplay thing, and I had no idea what copyright meant and all that. And I wasn't expecting to get, you know, thousands of views. I was, like, doing a... I, I scored, like, some sick shot um, and and did some, you know, cool gameplay stuff. And I made, like, a little montage and put, like, a whole track behind it. And it was basically just to show my friends. And I never, like, you know, it wasn't even monetized or anything. It was just to show my friends, oh, look at these, you know, sick shots I pulled off. But uh, it ended up getting copyrighted, like, two days after it got uploaded. And it got taken down and what and and you know I nobody could even see the video, um, and I then really like you know it it affects everyone. It doesn't just affect the big YouTubers. It affects the smaller YouTubers as well. So it goes across the whole platform. And now that YouTube are uh, or and Facebook and all these other video sharing websites, maybe like Vimeo and things like that, that aren't used as much for for YouTube type stuff. They're gonna now have to be required. It says required to use technology to track copyright violations. So nobody is going to escape from this. And I think smaller YouTubers are gonna get bullied more because they don't have networks or don't have people around them that can fight for this. And nobody really, you know, no matter how big you are or no matter how small you are on this platform or how much money you have behind you, you're not gonna win in, in a court if you take this to court. Um, because these, you know, record companies have, you know, millions and billions behind it, you know, and, and they will sue you, you know, you'll never win that, so there's no point. Um, it says, it then goes on to say that the planned reforms would also oblige publishers and producers to be transparent about profits made from the artist's work. So, this is another kind of topic where the money sort of thing and the money sort of thing is kind of shrouded in secrecy on YouTube um, because it would then you know you're then going into you know how much of in, in my in my thoughts on this like my um my uh, understanding of of this what this means is that the how like how would a producer or a publisher or whatever it says there how would it like a label if it's their artist music that's getting tampered with or used unfairly how would they then discern how important that music is to that video if you know what i mean because a lot of times you know i'll go into talking about this but you know a lot of times you know in in youtube videos it will be like a five or six second clip, probably like a drop from an EDM thing or something like a little transition. And that might just be, it. you know, in all, it might use like, you know, 30 seconds worth of music in like a 10 minute video. And how important then is that to the video? Can, 
you know, it, it doesn't, it's not taken away, it might be taken away value, but you know, you know what I kind of mean, I can't really phrase it that well, where how important is that music to that video and how, and what grounds do they have to decide that, you know, that's kind of where it comes to, you know, who decides how important that is, because they can't, they just cannot, they do not have the manpower to go through the hundreds and thousands of hours of videos uploaded every day on YouTube that use, you know, copyrighted music, so to speak, um, and watch all of that and see which ones are, you know, directly impacted by the music and which ones are using it in a way that's, yes, a copyright, but, you know, it doesn't um, impact them or the video, so to speak, if you know what I mean. I'm trying to phrase it um, rightly um, here. So that's kind of, you know, it, it goes on to, you know, say stuff like, you know, it, it includes um, the the thing they're trying to uh, to vote in is, you know, it also includes copyright protection for newspapers who are announced during European Commission President's Jean-Claude Juncker's State of Union speech. So the guy proposing this is the European Commission President. Um, so the fact that he's even talking about it is, means it is a big issue. And you know, some of you may not have seen in the news that, you know, Taylor Swift and a load of other artists, a load, and you can watch, um, if you look it up on YouTube, Philip DeFranco does a fantastic job um, of explaining this better than I will. But basically, a lot of artists got together and they said, hey, our music is used unfairly on these video sharing websites, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or whatever, and we're not making any money off this, and this is unfair. Now, a lot of YouTubers and a lot of people on YouTube were like, you know, laughing at them and going like, hey, you're making so much money anyway, and, you know, why are you, you know, tackling us? We're not, you you know, we're not using it in like a TV show or anything. We're using it just online. And I understand that, you know, especially if it's only like a five second clip, but at the same time, I, you know, you have to look at it from, say, Boogie's perspective where, you know, your, your creation is something you've spent so much time and so much money on and so much thought and effort and all of this. When that's used, you know, on another platform, you know, and you don't make any money off it, and money not might not be a big thing to them, but, you know, if it's taken away value, and also if it's used in a bad way, so if somebody puts them, you know, if somebody puts a an artist track behind something like, you know, uh, you know, or like, you know, a drop or something, you know what I'm trying to explain, they put it behind a video that's, you know, not safe for work, so to speak, like a bad video, like a, you know, a bullying video, or, a, you know, a, a more extreme, like, you know, like a, you know, a violent video, or something, and the artist, you know, the artist looks at that, and they go, well, that's not what I want my music to represent, but these people are making it, you know, look that way, or associating it with those kind of events, and how impactful, you know, we don't know how impactful that can be on, you know, on uh, on the artist. You know, if, if the artist wants to be family friendly or wants to pro project an image just like most YouTubers do. And then somebody takes that and puts it in a different light. How does that affect those artists? So, that's kind of really what I want to say on that. Um, it says, it then goes on to say, we want journalists or I want uh, journalists, publishers, and authors to be paid fairly for the work which I agree with, whether it's made in studios or in living rooms, whether it's disseminated offline or online, whether it's published via a copyright machine or commercially hyperlinked to the web. Okay, that really, it just goes on to kind of uh, explain that further. Um, under the uh, European Commission proposals, internet porters like Google and Reddit will be forced to pay newspaper publishers a license a license fee when using a small extract of news stories. Now this is something that may not concern YouTubers, but it is a big concern and it's something I wholly agree with. So people like I will I will say like you know quoting Philip DeFranco, because if you're watching this on YouTube, you probably know who Philip DeFranco is and you probably watch him to get your you know a, a good insight on the news. He quotes people and he gives them recognition and so do a lot of other news sources but some don't. They don't give people the right recognition and also another thing is 
he links their you know their website or their you know their article which I'm gonna do here but a lot of times um, you know news um, organizations or news people will read a whole you know article on you know they'll read the whole thing which is kind of um, I'm not gonna read this whole thing to kind of uh, you know be a hypocrite here um, <laughs> it would be kind of bad but my understanding is when they read that whole article then why would someone then go on to read it again if they've just listened to it or they've seen a picture of it if somebody puts it up online because then it's the same thing it takes away the value why would you go and watch Boogie's video on YouTube if you've seen the whole thing on Facebook you know why would you then go and read the article if you've just read the whole article on a different website or something else you know what I mean so it's kind of covering that which I think is very important I think it's something that a lot of us don't think about but it, it falls under the same um the same sort of window the same umbrella as as what happens here on YouTube so I think a lot of you can understand what you know the concerns about that is um however there's there's there is something interesting here the Carlo Perone if I'm pronouncing that wrong I apologize the head of the European news uh, newspaper publishers association welcomed the move um, he said it's a significant and historic step but however Conservative MEP Daniel Hannan claimed the plan won't lead to more income for news sites, let alone journalists. Now, I I I don't have a big understanding of income for journalists or or authors or anything like that. But what I will say is, when somebody, you know, publishes your or not publishes, but um, when somebody kind of you know acknowledges your work then people and people like it then people kind of you know if, if you play a, a music um, artist that maybe none of us have ever heard of and you really like that song and you like their sound and you like all that then chances are you'll go hey I'm gonna go check this artist out and see what other you know things they do and if you like their music you'll buy their music go to their concerts do that it can introduce um, people that's why a lot of uh, you know I don't think it's a bad thing you know if I was a musician um, I wouldn't be too upset if you know a big youtuber or somebody played my music because it would help me out but at the same time I think kind of falls under that I think if you know if if you have journalists you can trust um, then I think that's a very important thing I don't think there's a lot of that going on right now so if you find journalists you like their writing style you like you know what they talk about you know they're in their specific newspaper or website or whatever then it can lead to more revenue more you know um, you know visits on the website or more newspapers bought and things like that so I don't really I can't talk about this too much because I don't have a great understanding of it but I just want to kind of give you my thoughts on it um, if you've any you know experience with this or understand it further I would love to you know um, know about that so the, the it says the planned restrictions on the video websites come after a report from campaign mu uh, music group UK music which said the revenues from ad-funded digital services effectively devalue our music beyond protectionist and outdated legislation. Now, I agree with him here that the, it is it is so outdated. The the rules on YouTube and on you know online really because you know this online world. If you think about it, if you go back to YouTube, you know when it started. And you look at it now I mean it's only really it's since like maybe 2009 the YouTube has become YouTube you know where it went from being you know um, like uh, people just sharing you know family stuff and stuff like that to where people were actually making businesses out of it I would say about 2009 is when it kind of picked up that's just a rough estimate but um, since then I mean the, the rules on YouTube have, have changed because YouTubers have changed with it. I mean, you know, they've brought in all this, you know, um, they've brought in all this, you know, anti-bullying stuff because big YouTubers that you consider bullies, um, like maybe Rice Gum and Leafy, I'm not calling them out or anything, but, you know, a lot of people see them as that because they target groups and there's, you know, more, you know, channels like that and they bring in kind of protection, I suppose, against that. And there's going to be more channels that are going to cover different things and they're going to have to do that. So YouTube are kind of moving with the tide of the the YouTube community, which is kind of good. I mean, you know, 
not the monetization stuff because I got screwed over badly there. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that the outside world protecting, you know, it the rules really protect YouTubers and viewers, but I don't think it protects the people that are affected outside of YouTube. You know, if, if somebody talks about, um, you know, a funny story that involves someone and they talk about it on YouTube and that per person doesn't want that, you know, then, then, you know, there's no rules, really, you know, there's defamation and there's all this stuff, but then YouTube rules kind of protect the YouTuber and it goes into all this, I'm kind of getting off topic um, and talking about it badly, but really, I do think it's outdated and they will change it, it will be changed, but, and it kind of devalues the music, I kind of agree with him here, but then you go into this whole thing of, well, what is, you know, what, what, you know, I, I explained it um, earlier where, you know, how much of that music is being devalued and how much is actually, is it helping, you know, the artist, if, if somebody likes that music, you know, I've definitely listened to YouTube videos, um, or heard, you know, music on YouTube videos that have gone, oh my god, you know, who's this artist, and I'll go down to the description, and I'll find out, and I'll listen to their music, and I bought records off that, and I've found some brilliant artists because of that, but... You know, some people don't link, some people don't do that sort of stuff, maybe. I don't know, it goes into this whole thing about, I'm really interested to see how it's going to be structured and how it's going to affect people. And I think this has gone so under the radar that people aren't really worried about it, but I think they should be worried because this is not just some random art talking about, you know, so, you know, let's change something. This is, you know, the head of, you know, the European Commission of something. And then it goes on to say ABBA, Coldplay and uh, a few others, thousands of other artists signed their letter calling to crack down on websites that are unfairly siphoning value away from their music community. I mean, it's the same sort of thing here. You can take it, you know, as as you want. But, um, yeah, you can take it as you want. But, he, you know, the letter then said, you know, the situation not just harming today's record artists and songwriters. It threatens the survival of the next generation of creators too. And the viability of the diversity of work. The planned, and then it says, finally, the planned reforms will go to the European Parliament and the EU member states for approval. Okay, so that's it there. I'm gonna link it in the description. There's more to read about it, so you can check it out. But um, I I disagree with it here. I think a lot of points were made that are good by smart people, so to speak. But when these artists get there, I think they're they're not they're they're not right here that's basically what i want to say they're just they're wrong i i don't disagree that it devalues some sort of music it depends how it's used that's the thing but he it says it threatens the survival of the next generation of creators too does he have any idea how how like big people have gotten just off youtube alone i mean you look at people like KSI, he's now releasing EPs, he's going on tour selling his music. He he did that off YouTube. And then you've got people like, you know, Justin Bieber who isn't really a YouTuber, but he got discovered off YouTube. And then you've got people like Jacob Sartorius, who's cannot sing, and I am throwing shots, he cannot sing, but he's making millions of, of uh, dollars. You know, he's making millions of dollars off this, this career, this music career that he's built for himself off social media and people constantly viewing his work. I mean, you know, look at Ricegum how many times he covered it. Look at Leafy with, you know, both with millions and millions of subscribers. And I'd never heard of this kid, even though he was huge at the time. I'd never heard of this kid before watching their videos. And he's blown up and he's doing so well for himself. And I applaud the man for, or the kid I should say, for making such a good career out of, you know, maybe not having the best musical talent, but he is smart, he's made a huge career off it, and so are these other Musical.ly kids, and so many other artists that I don't even know have come off YouTube. I mean, some of your favorite artists, you know, in the next few years, probably started on YouTube doing stuff, um, and I don't know how it devalues it, it shows your music talents to millions of people, like millions of people, you know, an unlimited amount of people, and you get feedback and you get to, you know, um, build a business off music 
just off YouTube and just off other social media platforms. So, and also it doesn't even, you know, it doesn't even matter what gender you are, what sex you are, what religion you are, whatever you are. You can make music on YouTube, you can make any videos you want on YouTube, and you can make a career out of it. You don't ever have to leave your house, you can be a, um, you know, a 500 pound guy or girl, and make videos on YouTube and make a career out of it. You don't have to, you know, go through this whole music, you know, charade of, you know, trying to sell, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Like try to be this big pop star or anything. You can, if you make music online and sell it online, you can just focus on the music and not about the other stuff, if you know what I mean. So I think the best thing that's happened to music in the last few years has been the emergence of like video sharing websites where new artists don't have to go on things like X Factor or American Idol or any of those, you know, The Voice or any of those things to have their music shown to millions of people. They can just upload it online and hope that it, you know, picks up and they, they build something out of it. So, I disagree with them on that. I think it's harming today's artists because they're not with the times. But the future generation of artists, it's helping them there. And if you disagree with me, I would love to hear your points disagreeing with me. But, I think, you know, I, 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 I just can't agree with them there. I think it's very stupid to... To go on that point but I think it's kind of more scaremongering you know what I mean like you know young um, you know hopefuls in the music industry uh, looking at this and, and saying oh my god you know you know my music is gonna be stolen and I need to go into these things and look at all these big artists talking about it and they've got so successful and some of them might be you know my favorite artists and if they are talking about this and saying it's gonna threaten me then I should be concerned about this but if you're listening to this and you are someone that wants to get into the music industry, YouTube and all of that is the best thing you can do. Because I would love to listen to people like, um, oh my god, I saw someone talking about their music, some rapper, I think it was just on Ellen, um, I saw a, uh, um, a YouTube like interview with him um, by Ellen, and he's not signed by a, a label. I'm fairly sure Macklemore when he released his first album, I'm not sure if he is now wasn't with the label and you can do that as well I mean you know there's there's all these you know look in the the music industry and you know there's all these horrible things to do with labels and there's good things I mean I have friends with sound or music labels and it's they they regret it you know so bad it's like you know it's it if you hear youtubers talk about it it's like youtubers with um networks and they get you know i remember leafy talking about you know being in machinima and trying to get out of that bad situation and if you sound with a music label that you don't like and you find out they're not actually working for you you know when you're already you know two or three months in and you've got a two year or however long contract it can be very bad so if you focus on your music and that alone then everything else will play out so, the last thing I want to talk about and I kind of want to engage with you guys is how this is going to affect YouTubers. Now, if you've stuck with me, um, I, I appreciate that, but this is really where um, it's the important thing. How is this going to affect you? First of all, in the United States, it probably won't affect us because this is a European commission. So, it's Europe. So, it's, it's not really going to affect us. Secondly... How is this going to affect the UK? So some of my favorite artists um, that are on YouTube are from the UK. Now the UK, you may or may not know, has voted to leave the, um, the EU. So is this going to pass through while they're still in the EU? Because currently they are still in the EU. So when they leave the EU, will this mean that they're, they don't have to abide by this rule? You know, um, it also says... Uh, EU member states can vote for approval. So this might not go through and it might go through and people um, You know might choose not to implement it as much or whatever um, I have no idea how the EU rules work, but that's an interesting thing How it will affect the UK in the short term and the long term if it is if it is approved So how will it affect youtubers? So first of all I watch a lot of like, you know football, uh, you know kind of um sports videos so to speak you know real life sports videos whether it's you know compilations or youtubers doing uh, you know challenges or whatever 
a lot of times if they're about to hit a great shot, there'll be like um, a few seconds, maybe five or six seconds of music that's obviously, you know, by a big artist because I recognize it. And they'll have that maybe three or four times in the video and and sometimes there's, you know, more or sometimes there's less. Just a generalization here. But what that means is that they, um, will, that, will that be copyrighted? How will that affect them? So that's the first point I want to make. Second point is cover artists. So to my understanding, unless you have um, like a approval or the artist that you're covering lets you cover that, I'm fairly sure that violates some sort of copyright law. Now I, I, I in my mind, it's a glimpse of seeing this online somewhere, but I'm not sure about that. Um, if you know more about that, let me know in the comments. Um, but how will it affect them? Because I listen to a lot of cover artists. Sometimes, and not always, but sometimes, you'll you'll find covers of music that is way better than the original. Um, and I really like listening to that. So I hope that doesn't affect that. Um, especially to all you up and comers, you know you don't you want to cover your favorite artist things. I think it's a show of appreciation and and all that. So. Um, and I may even upload, you know, some stuff that will probably be terrible, but you know what, I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know, a musician or anything, but it would just be for a bit of fun. So I think that would be taking away a lot of creativity on the website. But going back to that point that they said that it's going to affect the next generation of artists, if they decide that covers are no longer acceptable online, then the, you know, what I talked about with up and coming musicians, they might be forced to go on like X Factor or American Idol or sign with the music label and not go about the route of, you know, making music on YouTube and building a career off there. You know, look at someone like Boyce Avenue. Boyce Avenue are amazing, amazing cover artists here on YouTube and they also make great original stuff and I've been listening to them for years. And a lot of their best stuff that I've listened to um, over the years have been covers and they've built a career they've gone touring they've released you know their own albums that have done really well and have built this whole career off and they were even on like some sort of like the voice or something off youtube i'm fairly sure they could have done it some other way but i discovered them off youtube and everything so i don't know if that's how they do it but they they've built a career in music just off youtube i think I don't, they might be signed with a label or something, I don't know, but there are countless others on YouTube who have built careers, music careers, just off YouTube. And these people might be forced to go down a route they don't really want to and make music they don't really want to if they are forced to sign with a label um, and they can't make a career off YouTube. So probably the last point I want to make is how is it going to affect remixes? So. A lot of times, you know, there's huge YouTube channels that make remixes. They make original songs and they feature original, you know, artists and stuff. But a lot of them make, you know, remixes of popular songs at the time. So there's people, you know, like um, Spinning Records and Ultra Music and um, Crunks, I'm fairly sure is his name pronounced. He makes great music. Um, and there are countless others, you know, even big producers will make things, but I'm sure they will you know, have permission from the artist to a certain extent or the artist will appreciate it. Um, but, you know, how will it affect them? Because you can't, you know, I, I just don't know. So, I just, I really wanted to, to highlight this because I think a lot of people maybe, maybe didn't see this because it's not a US story. So, you know, a lot of US people obviously didn't see it online. But I happened to come across it and I wanted to talk about it because I don't I didn't hear anybody else did, you know, uh, have talk about it. So I, I'm kind of, you know, mumbling here and, and kind of run out of time. It's been a very long video. But I just wanted to leave you with this, guys. Please comment below if you've more understanding of this. And just know that, you know, things are going to change. But, you know, as long as a community, we come together and decide you know, what is good and what is bad, and we fight for each other, the bigger YouTubers and the smaller YouTubers, as long as we help each other, then we can grow this into a community that is good for everyone, 
you know, both the creators and the viewers. And I think that's the main thing. We want to create a platform that everyone of all races, genders, you know, all this stuff, uh, religions and everything can enjoy. So if we come together, we can achieve that. So yeah, just if you guys have any more information or any more knowledge on this topic, um, I would love to hear it. Um, you can talk to me on Twitter or in the comments section below. Um, besides that, guys, I will link the um, the article here in the description. So go check that out. And besides that, guys, um, it's been your boy, of course, and I will catch you next time. See ya.